Your Honours, General Chermak is appointed on the on the 5th of August, and in my report I have included an order he issues already on the 5th. And formally, Operation Storm finishes, I think, around the 9th or the 10th, just to clarify. Uh, we're going to be looking at that order on the 5th of August. As, uh, have you analysed the date on that order and how it could have been issued on the date it says it is? Well, I have... Uh, You're an analyst. In indeed, and... and um, have you analysed it, yes or no? Yes. The date? Yes. Thank you. We, we, uh, again, this, this rather defies that proposition, doesn't it, Mr. Turnans, concerning Mr. Chermak's authority and position, because he would be copied in on all these documents, wouldn't he? Uh, he should have been copied in, but the fact that General Gotovina does not, or I apologize, subordinate commanders of General Gotovina do not uh, include General Chermak in these orders was for me an indication that the professional relationship between General Chermak as the garrison commander and General Gotovina as the split military district commander is not as, I use the expression, clear-cut as is established in the doctrine. My conclusion in relation to the position of General Chermak as the most senior civilian slash military authority in Knin is based on a review of the orders uh, issued by General Chermak. We, we will be looking at those, and the, the bet judges have seen all those orders all, already uh, and know what you refer to, but um, you told us you're an expert on command and control, and the question I have is this. Um, if all this is, is happening, and all these orders are being issued, it doesn't seem that the man you described as being the superior military authority is within the command and control system. Isn't that right? Uh, yes, and that is why I have included this section on uh, the nature of the professional relations between the commander of the split military district and the commander of the Knin garrison, starting on page 258 of the second part of the report. Even independently of the position of General Chermak as what I described as the, the most senior military authority in Knin, even as a garrison commander with a, at a much lower military rank than the rank of Colonel General, one would expect that, at least in accordance with the doctrine, he, as the garrison commander, would have been included in orders that deal with the relocation of units to barracks in the zone of the Knin garrison. In, in, in fact, in relation to all these units, you couldn't have effective command if you're outside the system, if the system is not working with you in it as a component commander, could you? That is correct, but I have not uh, put in my report that General Chermak has command over these units. Um, um, no, uh, that's right, but you've read the indictment, and you may have forgotten the indictment, and the indictment at paragraph 7 um, describes Ivan Chermak um, as possessing effective control over members of the HV units or elements 
who comprised or were attached to or operated in the Canine garrison and also over the civilian police who operated in the garrison area. And then it describes the HV units without limitation. The 4th, 7th Brigades, 1st Croatian Guards Brigade, 113th, 142nd, 144th, 126th Home Guard, um, the 6th and 7th, 134th, a combined military police company, members of the Zadarkanin Kota um, police administrations. I appreciate the civilian area is outside, in a way, at your position. But, but looking at all these military district documents, we've looked at a few here which go to a particular issue, but there, as you know, are, are thousands in relation to all those units. Uh, General Chermak is, is copied in on a handful of matters, isn't he? Uh, it is correct, and, and I think that's also visible through my report, that there are very few orders by General Gotovina to the Knin Garrison Command or the Knin Garrison Commander during the time period. General Chermak is the commander of the Knin Garrison. My, my question is about General Chermak having effective control over all those units. They're all operating every day in relation to their activities, where they go, what they do, completely independently and without General Chermak. That's right, isn't it? What I'm putting to you is that paragraph 7 on this indictment doesn't fit with your expert's report. That may well be possible. I mean, I'm, I haven't... Uh, uh, I read the indictment once, as I mentioned, uh, at the very start of uh, the, the report project, in order to determine time frame uh, locations and other relevant aspects. Um, otherwise, I have not been influenced or, have, or was bound anyway by what is in the indictment. My findings or my conclusions in relation to uh, the role of General Gotovina as the Knin Garrison Commander are included in my report and uh, more specifically in paragraphs 49 to, I believe, 51 of the executive summary. Um, I hesitate to say you demoted General Gotovina to the garrison commander, um, but I apologize. won't be controversial. No, it, it, should, it should read Cermak. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, uh, but what I'm, I'm, I'm putting to you is, is right on that passage of the indictment that I read out in relation to um, paragraph 7 which asserts that Ivan Chermak possessed in various structures of power and responsibility and possessed effective control over all those units. They're all the split military district units that we are familiar with. Is in fact not borne out by uh, your experts' report and indeed all the documents that you have seen. It's right, isn't it? I'm right. Yeah, I mean, I haven't addressed effective control and I haven't seen any uh, um, material, I mean, documents uh, on that aspect uh, concerning the role of General Chermak as the commander of the Canin garrison. Thank you very, 
very much, Your Honour. I've just had a note that um, Mr. Misetich needs to address you urgently. And if I can just ask that uh, document 65 ter 755 be admitted into evidence, please. Mr. Whisper.